OK, so in this problem, we have a canoe uh, that's paddled across a river, which has a width of 20 metres. The canoe moves from the point X on one bank of the river to the point Y on the other bank, so that its path is a straight line at an angle of alpha to the banks. The velocity of the canoe relative to the water is 4 metres per second perpendicular to the banks, and the water flows at 2 metres per second parallel to the banks. We're going to model the canoe as a particle, and we first of all want to find the magnitude of the resultant velocity of the canoe. Now, seeing as the canoe is per going perpendicular, has aimed itself perpendicular to the banks, it's going at 4 metres per second, we can draw ourselves a right angle triangle here, alongside with the fact that the water is travelling at 2 metres per second parallel to the banks. So effectively, you've got this picture where you're traveling four meters per second in that direction, and you are also traveling two meters per second. The water's pushing you two meters per second in that direction, which creates this right angle triangle. And the resultant velocity is this here, okay, this side. So we can use basic Pythagoras to get there. So we can say if that's V, then v squared is equal to 2 squared plus 4 squared. So v is the square root of 20. Okay. Now, you could simplify that down to 2 root 5. Okay. Or you could put it into decimal form to three significant figures if you like. That will be to meters per second. Okay. So 2 root 5 is 4.47 meters per second to three significant figures. Now, we're also asked to find the angle alpha. Okay, so you could either use this diagram here, okay, or you could redraw that triangle, if you like, to be where alpha is in that position. So what you have is a right angle triangle that you could draw in this way instead. Okay, there's the alpha. If that's going to be 4 and that's going to be 2, okay, I've just drawn it around the other way, then it's quite easy to see how we can get to alpha because we have the opposite and adjacent to the right angle triangle. So tan of alpha is equal to 4 over 2. Okay, the opposite over the adjacent. So just 2. So that means we can have alpha being the inverse tan of 2. So inverse tan of 2, or arc tan, is 63.4 degrees to three significant figures. Now find the time that it takes for the canoe to travel from x to y. Now, you could, if you wanted to, um, work out the length from x to y, okay? Now you can do that because you now have the angle alpha and also the height of that triangle 20, okay? Because you know the speed that it's going, or the velocity rather, as it's going from x to y, you could uh, find out that length, divide it by the uh, 4.47 meters per second, and that will give you how long it would take to get from x to y. Okay? Now, that's a perfectly valid method of doing it. However, what you should also recognise is the fact that your canoe is travelling at 4 metres per second in that direction perpendicular to the bank. Okay? Now, the only thing that is resisting it and hindering it is coming parallel to the bank at 2 metres per second. So, although you're canoe is getting being, is being pushed to the right, it's still travelling at 4 metres per second in that direction. So there's nothing actually kind of like hindering it in that direction, pushing, it, pushing against it. So that means that it's still going to be travelling the 20 metres at 4 metres per second. So the actual time is the distance divided by the speed. So 20 over 4, this will be your time. So it's just 5 seconds. 
So there are more complicated ways of calculating that, as I described, but because there's no resistance uh, slowing that speed down, going perpendicular to the bank, then it will be just 20 divided by 4.